like to ask a question, please raise your hand, and then Jack will take some questions in Welsh at the end. Uh, unfortunately, the translation system isn't working, so uh, you'll just have to go in all in English, I'm afraid. So we will kick off with Matt. Warren, what's, uh, what's special about these weeks not going around you? Uh, I think the, the first challenge is obviously the, the pressure you're under to, to make the knockout stages. and th So that's um, the, the biggest task that you want to, or the biggest hurdle you want to get over. And then um, the quarterfinal poses its own challenges and pressures because you're either here to the end of the tournament or you're going home on Monday. So, um, And we're definitely as a squad, we're ready, not ready to go home. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's pressure rugby now, isn't it? It's knockout stages, and that's what we've prepared for and done all the hard work that we've put into it. So, uh, we're really excited about the challenge on Saturday. What was the approach to that pressure? Did you work with it in, or did you again try and work it Oh, you just got to embrace it. You know, you can't, you can't hide away from it. Um, we've, uh, we know within a squad the, the preparation that's gone into this. World Cup and the hard work that we've put in. Uh, we're not surprised at all by where we are and finishing top of the group and we haven't picked up too many injuries which has been a bonus um, and we think we're in pretty good shape from a physical point of view but also from a mental point of view in terms of our preparation so we're, like I said we're looking forward to the weekend. You know the rugby team and the dogs but as you say you've topped the group this year as a group where there's almost maximum points Michael Chapman has called you favourites are you comfortable with that as well? Yeah absolutely so you just got to, you just got to, you know, I don't know where Michael sort of got, got, got that from. He's probably to, trying to take some pressure off himself. Uh, if you read or listened to anyone two months ago, there was, there was a lot of speculation, people predicting we wouldn't even get out of the group. So, um, and we embraced that because we can only control the things that we can do. And we knew what we were doing with, with the group. And if things change, then um, you've got to be comfortable with, with whatever's been thrown at you, so you know we 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 haven't spoken about underdogs or favourite tags. We're just going through our own processes and working as hard as we can to make sure that the preparation's right for, for Saturday. Okay. Hey, well, and, um, talk to us a little bit about this Uh, uh, Liam, Liam's fine. He just took quite a s severe knock on the on his knee last weekend, so he was up and running on Tuesday. We kept him out of the contact stuff. He took a full part in training today. Um, Dan's Dan was the same. Uh, we put him on the bench last week. We didn't need to use him. Um, you know, he's just got his, his pecs a bit bit sore. And Gareth's uh, up and running. And hopefully that fingers crossed things go well for us and. Saturday, and he, he's in contention for next week. Um, in terms of the contingency, um, you know, whether that would have been Lee Halfpenny, um, who we know positionally and defensively how good he is, we're expecting Argentina, Argentina to kick a lot of ball uh, against us in the weekend, so that was one consideration, or whether we moved uh, Lewis to, uh, back to fullback and, and Rio started on the wing. So, you know, we had options to cover that. and. Um, but you know we didn't really have to go through the process in terms of discussing that because we were very confident from Tuesday that um, that Liam was going to be fit for the weekend. And this is your fourth fourth time as a coach. What learnings have you taken from previous experiences? What do you do differently now that you're getting to a fourth final compared to from previous years? Is this something you go off and you have got to learn this time? Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't think the approach has been any different it's about I think as a as a as a group of coaches that we we don't overcoach this week, we don't give a we don't give too much information. Um, and you know, how do you shorten up trainings, how do you the players have done all the hard work, they've put all the work into it. So it can be a tendency sometimes that you your training sessions go a little bit longer and you try and cover things off, but I, I, I try and focus on the other aspect of it. You, you shorten things up. We we previously had a 
heavier week last week. Uh, the ground that we were training on was a bit heavier. We did a lot more conditioning last week because we knew we were in the quarterfinals. Um, so it was a bit of a top-up week, and, and we got through that and, and, um, and beating Georgia um, with the plan of that being that we shortened a lot of things up for this weekend. We wanted it to be sharp, and we wanted the intensity to be there, and the guys have been excellent this week. Elgin? Hi, Warren. The, after Georgia gave you sort of outline of what, what the back row might look like after Chris Kelly's head injury, how did you hold on Tuesday, Tuesday morning and Mr. Kelly? Yeah, it's, uh, it was a, a really healthy uh, debate with the coaches in terms of which way we went. Did we go uh, with a traditional six and uh, potentially a, a, someone who was a bit bigger and with a bit more size? But we felt that um, you know, the way that Tommy had, had played, um, the, the turnovers, the, the breakdown, and it's going to be really competitive on, on the weekend. Um, it was just a matter of making that decision, get our best players on the field. Uh, spoke to spoke to Jack. Um, you know, he was very comfortable moving to six. I did say to him, I think it's tough on you. Um, I think you've been the best seven in this tournament so far. So I kind of feel that we've got a couple of world class sevens at our disposal. Um, you know, long term, I've also spoken. It's not something that we want to to replicate on too many occasions. And like I said, if we get through this weekend, it might be a different decision made for, for you know, potentially the semi-final. But you know, this it's a game, horses for courses, and what we're expecting from Argentina this week, uh, we've gone with that, the makeup of that back row, um, and we think they'll do a, a great job for us. Um, no, they're definitely going to be playing six and seven. So, so Jack sort of taking more of a role where um, Tulupe would have been from a line-out perspective. Um, but I, I see them sort of a crossover from a defensive point of view and from, from scrums and changing that role. But um, I don't think, hopefully, you know, not, not a lot, too much changes. We definitely want to get the ball in Jack's hands. You know, we know how good he is from a carrying perspective. Um, Defensively, he's been outstanding. His kicking game's been excellent as well. So, um, yeah, that was supposed to be a joke, so it didn't go down well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, look, um, we're aware that we're probably um, down a little bit in size, and that's why, with Chris being on the bench, um, um, he gives us a, a, an extra line out option as well coming from that. He, you know, we've been happy with the way that he's progressed. and the team and again with um, uh, Dewey on the, on the bench um, as well uh, gives us a little bit more size really tough on Elliot he hasn't done anything wrong um, and I sat down with him a couple of go days ago he was he was pretty disappointed about not being involved in the 23 and you know he, he was talking through and I, I just stopped him there and I said look the question you should be asking me is what the hell have I done wrong to be not be included in the 23 that's what you should be asking me uh, because I can't really give you an answer. You haven't done anything wrong. You've done everything that's been asked, and he's been outstanding for us. And so he's he's incredibly unlucky not to be involved in 23. So, but that from from a positive point of view, that I, d I don't mind that because then it puts a little bit of pressure on the other player to to step up and and, and perform. So, like we're in a healthy place at the moment with from, with the squad. Uh, they've been outstanding. They've been excellent to work with as a group. I think there's. Some real harmony with within this camp, um, where the guys have been, when they've been asked to switch on, they've really focused on the rugby aspects. But they've also enjoyed themselves and had a bit of fun, um, you know, meetings and presentations that they've been doing. So they've and we've had, we've had a few laughs. So I think the balance has been really good so far. James. James, the young Wales captain. How are you feeling heading into this challenge ahead, and what it means to you to get to the World Cup semi final? Oh, um, pretty nervous going into the weekend, uh, but but looking forward to it as well. Um, yeah, you know, uh, it's, it, it, it means everything to be able to go go through to the quarterfinals and and yeah, it's, it's, it's been a great honour. But um, yeah, we're not not trying to think too too far ahead at the minute. Just just think about the weekend and, and that's one thing we've done well over over the last few weeks. Just take it step by step, and that's what we'll, we'll do again on for Saturday. Yeah, 
could have a big Welsh following at the stadium coming over. How do you roll with that play? Yeah, massive. It's, it's, it's played a massive role already uh, uh, this, uh, so far this tournament. Um, being able to see so many Welsh supporters out uh, in, in the stand supporting and all, all the family and friends who've, who've come out as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great boost for the boys and, uh, and gives a massive buzz and, uh, for everyone. And Mark, what do you make of Argentina and the challenge? They seem to be improving as the tournament goes on. Yeah, I think that uh, yeah, they've had some pretty tight contests. You know, they, they, uh, the Fiji game, the Samoa, there was not, not really a lot in that game. I thought Samoa played pretty well. Argentina will be disappointed with the way they played against England, you know, with England uh, getting that uh, red card early on. And probably they probably, when they reflected back on that, probably played too much rugby and tried to just thought that the red card would take care of itself and, and potentially force a game. So they've been, since then, they've been much more pragmatic. Um, you know, they're physical. Uh, they've got a good line out. The, the, the malls drive. They drive well. Uh, they'll carry hard, and they've got some dangerous, exciting backs. So it's it's going to be. I, I think in some strange way they bring that sort of um, South American mentality. They're very passionate, um, and that's why they've won big games against the, the top teams in the past in the Southern Hemisphere. Is because um, you know they don't give up. They they stay in the fight. They, they're a really tough team to break down and, and beat and. And so we've got a huge amount of respect for them as a team. We know it's going to be you know, a big challenge for us um, on, on the weekend. But, um, but you've got to be excited about it. We're looking, really looking forward to it. I know physicality is always key in rugby, but is it particularly so when you're playing Argentina? Will that be a key area for you? Oh, we expect them to come really hard at us and, and be physical and, and carry. Um, I, I don't think anything changes. I think the, the players are well aware of that. We've probably had... We talk about being on that sort of um, the edge mentally, and you can't be there at the to at top of that every single week. So it's how close you can get to it. We've had a couple of games already that we feel we've been on that really on the edge uh, in a positive way, and a couple of games where we've been off it two or three percent. So it's how close you can get sort of to that you know that hundred percent sort of um, mental sort of peak that you're looking forward to to take into these big games and. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm expecting that that will be right up there from a from that physical challenge that'll come at us on, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenneth, in English. Yes, in English, uh, Jack. Um, Warren alluded to the enforced changes in the background, the positional changes. Uh, just wondered how um, obviously it affects the balance, but how does that dynamic work now, especially between you uh, and Tommy, to recognise them? Um, I don't think. Too much changes, especially like in uh, in open field. Um, obviously, it'll be it'll be different in the, in the set piece. But um, we've, me, me and Ref have played together before, and I've found I, I enjoy playing with Ref, and we have, have a great great balance of work with each other and bouncing off each other. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, looking forward to it uh, to the to the back row on the weekend. Does it be someone you know well? You played obviously I think once together for Wales, but you came through again the twenty months as well. Yeah, we came through together in the twenties. Um, Four years ago now, I think. So, yeah, we 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 played a whole tournament uh, with, with each other then. So, yeah, uh, played played quite a bit with with ref. So, yeah, looking looking forward to. Just just one one more. Um, Michael Chepe uh, has heard of you playing for it. Although I was in the Argentinian press yesterday, they heard the confidence there that they think they haven't performed yet. That that they want to take Wales on. What, what have you made of them so far? Yeah, the, the, you know, they they had a couple of. They, you know, after every game, they, I think they're they're, they're improving. Uh, th th the tournament, so we know they they're, they're going to be they're going to be dangerous on, on the weekend, and I know that we, we're going to have to be uh, be be at our best. Um, but uh, yeah, we haven't thought though, too much about you know whether we favour us or not. But what we've done is just everything that we've we've got in our control and everything that we've worked on over the last couple of weeks. We just carried on working on that and and try and try and better ourselves on the, on the things that we, we can control within ourselves. Okay, great. Well, right, um, how are you being? Well, I think <clears throat> the first step was the four Northern Hemisphere teams finishing top of the pools. That's never happened before, so I think it's a it's a real positive for the game, considering how much the Southern Hemisphere dominated World Cups in the past. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, 
I can only see that as being positive for the game if, uh, if that potentially does happen. Uh, I'm not looking too much at some of the other games. I'm, you know, I'll watch it from a, a spectator's point of view with with interest. Um, but you know, we can just we're just focusing on ourselves and not looking too too far afield or too far, too far ahead in terms of you know the, the potential outcomes of what's going to happen. Yep, we're aware of it, but it's not really not really front of our minds too much. Well, I'd just say to the other teams, they should have done better in the last World Cup, shouldn't they? Because that's where the draw came from. It's not, it's, it's not our fault that it, it's happened if, uh, if teams had, had got better, had better performance and results from the last World Cup, they'd probably be in different draws. And You know, you didn't hear us complaining in 2015 when we've got Fiji, Australia and England and ourselves in the same pool. We never, we never complained about that. Just you, you, you dealt a hand and you just got to deal with it. So... Um, you know, I understand there's been a lot of complaining, and I, and I agree with the sentiment that you know, the potentially the draw may have been done too early. It's been done too early in the past. Uh, it was probably done uh, before 2019. It was done too early as well. So you know, whether whether the people in control of that next time can can put the, the pools together a little bit later, um, that's up to them. But you know, we can't change what's what's been done. Um, all I can say, we were only in control of what we were doing. We, we're happy with the progress we've made, you know, considering there's a lot of people speculating, and a lot of people in this room said we wouldn't get out of our group. So um, I said we can only only play and do what's in front of us. Um, and even though, um, in saying that, I, I thought I thought our group was was the most even group. We had, you know, the way that Portugal, when Georgia are not an easy team to knock over. And, we were probably the only group who didn't have a real minnow in there that had 60 or 70 points put on them. So I think that's set us up nicely for for the quarterfinals. And yeah, just it's kind of one step at a time. OK, we'll come to one from Matt, then uh, one from Alex, and then we'll move to Welsh with Lowry. Warren, just a word on uh, George North having played his fourth World Cup quarterfinal. Do you think he's close to yeah, I look. I think you know he's done exceptionally well. Sort of moving from we know what he was like as a youngster when he was on the wing, that um, power and pace that he had. Uh, you know, we've moved him into the midfield. He's a hell of a lot slower now than he used to be. Uh, <laughs> no, he's not that slow, but uh, he. Um, but he's, he's he's one of the you know, leaders within the group. Uh, he's, a, he's a big contribution to and input into the week, and, and you know not just on the field, but you know, definitely off the field. Um, so it's, it's a fantastic accolade for him to have gone through some of the the trials that he's had in terms of you know, injuries over the years and some some of the concussions and stuff. And I think at the moment he's starting to play um, some really good rugby, and I think. We were we were pretty conscious and been conscious in this World Cup uh, about trying to create a, a midfield combination that is a little bit more settled and, and we know how many combinations that have been there in the last few years and you know it was a big part of that trying to find out about some some of the players in the midfield so we I think that's definitely helped the progress this team's made from an attacking perspective that we've kept the Nick and. Um, George together in that midfield for as many games as we had, and I think it's made it easier on the the back three and the and you know, the guys inside them as well. So um, look, he's just you know he's a big part of the squad, and um, yeah. So I, I don't know how long he's got left in his career. So whether whether he makes that decision, how long he's going to continue to to play, or whether I make that decision, we'll have to wait and see. So, um, but. It's a, it's a huge accolade for him to to achieve what he's done. Okay, and final one in English with Alex. Yep. Uh, given the situation we inherited in the Charles, given the challenges that Wales face on and off the field during the Six Nations, were 
really tremendous to play the finals of the World Cup. How proud would you be and where would you place that achievement? Um, yeah, I think when I look back on it, if we make the semi-finals, it would be our third semi-final, and then 2015 we were leading South Africa for 75 minutes and uh, you know, conceded at the end. So I, I think that re reflecting on that, would be pretty proud of that. Uh, I, I've always spoken about how much I've enjoyed or like the World Cups is because of the preparation. You actually. It's the first time, you, the only time you really get a chance to feel like you're a club side in terms of getting that detail done, and it's, you know, it's definitely like having an off season, and you feel like you can make a, a huge amount of progress, and and that's helped us in the past that we've done pretty well at World Cups, and we've tended to do well in Six Nations, you know, following World Cups as well. Um, it's going to be different because we're going to have a few changes, you know, after this World Cup in terms of some players not being available to us going going forward um, and you know after all the challenges sort of um, during the Six Nations with uh, the documentary and uh, the potential strikes and uh, the contracts and the money with the union and the region yeah that was um, kind of at the time you just you know we would talk about you know as coaches and sort of make a joke you know, what, what's going to happen today what's going to be the the next thing that's that's thrown at us, um, and but I think there's definitely been a, a line in the sand that's been drawn under that, and so if we if we can make the semi-finals, I think it'll be um, you know a huge achievement for this group of players and and the coaches who have done a great job and the backroom staff have been absolutely outstanding and. Um, I know there's some people and there's some teams out there who don't, who won't want to face a Wales team with, when they start playing with confidence and they start, we start having momentum. Um, that's when we are at our most dangerous, and we're starting to look that way at the moment. Okay.